seeing him on our screens as the happy-go-lucky Bob Hope, mm. appearing in Emmerdale for over 20 years. But behind the scenes, Tony Audenshaw has be been coming to terms with the tragic loss of his wife Ruth to pancreatic cancer, and he joins us now to explain more alongside Dr Samia. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for being here this morning. And, Tony, you, are, you have this huge event taking place on the 29th of May, and this is Ride for London, and we'll come to that in a moment, but really the whole reason and the whole purpose for you getting on your bike and cycling 100 miles around London is in honour of your wife and to spread awareness for pancreatic cancer. So just to find out a little bit more about her, really, and what, what she was like. Yeah, she was great. She was good fun. She was easy going. She, uh, in fact, about 15 years ago, we came on the show and she fancied Philip. Ah. And when she was 15, she'd drawn a picture of him and put it on a wall. Oh. So she had great taste in men. She did. <laughs> yeah. She was uh, really hard working. She was at the age of 30. She was a ward sister on an acute mental health ward in Oldham. Yeah. Where uh, I was born. Yeah. yeah. There's a and ridiculous connection. Every year. <laughs> yeah. And then she became a CBT therapist. And she was a really fit person. She ran, she cycled, and it was part of that that masked the symptoms. Mm -hmm. In that she, her urine was very dark, and she'd been doing a lot of running, and it could have been dehydration. Other than that, you know, she was feeling a bit tired, but our daughter had just gone travelling. It could have been something to do with that. Yeah. So she went to the doctors because this, this dark urine happened for a few days, and they thought it might be a urinary infection. Took tests, it wasn't. By this time, she'd gone yellow herself. Mm. Uh, and a, a poo had gone uh, a different colour. I can't believe I'm talking about Ruth's poo. Mm. Yeah. She'd be mortified in front of you, Philip, but obviously. But it's really important to <laughs> talk about these. these well, it is. Yeah. Um, and so she went back to the doctors and they said, look, you, you know, she'd already Googled that it could be pancreatic cancer and she had an anxiety about having cancer. Um, and so the doctor said, well, it could be up to two weeks before you can get a scan. We knew, because she'd read, that with pancreatic cancer, over half the people die within three months of diagnosis. Um, it, it, and it's been the case since the 70s. It's really been left behind uh, regarding funding. And so she checked herself in Halloween 2015 to the local hospital and had her scans and then it unfolded that it was pancreatic cancer. And so how were you told? How were you both told? Uh, well, it was a couple of weeks. They, they did investigations and they put a stent in to, to relieve uh, a jaundice. Um, it, it was pretty grim, I've got to say. Mm. I, I was sort of an optimist and so I was expecting that it wouldn't be anything too bad, that it would be a benign tumour. But it was, in no uncertain terms, um, uh, the doctor sort of said, you know, it, it, it's cancer. Um, we don't know if it's, and it's inoperable. One of the problems with pancreatic cancer and adenocarcinomas at the head of the pancreas is that there's all sorts of tubes and pipes there. The bile ducts have been closed and the, the, the tumour's wrapped half the way around her portal vein. And so it's very difficult to operate on. So they said it couldn't be operated on. They may or may not give a treatment. It was, it was a really grim outlook yeah. at the start, but soon she got in with, the, with support nurses and they were, you know, a bit... And a surgeon, she had a second opinion, anybody who's going through this, she had a second opinion, of course, the surgeon said, you know, we might be able to do it, the tumour might shrink with chemotherapy, we might be able to cut it out, and that gave her a lot of hope at you that time. You went to Germany for that? Well, in the end, yeah, she had chemotherapy, she had folfirinox, which is uh, quite a harsh chemotherapy, and uh, it wasn't really working, it was keeping it at bay, but it wasn't shrinking it much, and so she found out she went on these patient forums of Pancreatic Cancer UK, who were doing the cycle for, and the support nurses there, she was in contact with them in email, and she found out about this expert in Germany, uh, Professor Buschler, in Heidelberg, where all they do all day is pancreatic uh, operations, the Whipple operation. And uh, we went over and uh, we said, you know, we maybe give it a go, it was risky. As soon as he said that he thought he could do it, she went, right, that's it, let's, let's get go. it done. You know, we we're going to discuss it with the kids. No. Nope. I want it doing, let's get it done, and... Uh... And they did, and they did manage to remove the tumour, but unfortunately it, it spread to other areas. Yeah, yeah. part of the thing is when you have surgery is that um, you can't have chemotherapy for a little while because obviously chemotherapy kills the good cells as well as the bad cells. So while it was all clinging together, uh, you know, uh... some cells had got loose and it was quite devastating actually because it was probably two months after the operation and we uh... found out that it spread already. You then decided that you would live life like you were retired. Yeah. I mean, Ruth, because she was still undergoing treatment, she went on a less harsh chemotherapy. Um, and there were days when she was really tired and she couldn't do much. But on the days when she felt good, 
she did stuff. She met up with friends. Uh, she went. She, she couldn't run so much anymore. She had a hitman line in. Um, but she carried on cycling. She loved cycling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, a case of not going, you know, not being stuck in the hospital all the time or going for appointments all the time. Getting out on that bike and feeling the wind in her hair was just brilliant, you know. So we did loads of stuff. We went on loads of breaks. And when she was well enough, we, we did things. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry that you lost her in your life. She sounds like an amazing lady, that's for ace. sure. Um, you are getting on the bike yourself, as I said at the beginning, and you're taking on part in this Ride London. Um, how's, the, how's the training going? I mean, you're fit as a fiddle anyway. You've done 10 marathons and you ride anyway. So have you just sort of had to up it a bit? Yeah, I don't ride that much when I'm not training for things. We did, with work, we've got a great work team called the Wheel Packers, like the Wool Packers, <laughs> but it's the Wheel Packers. And there's 10 of us from work and four mates yeah. all doing it together. And we did Wales in a Day a few years. There we are. We did uh, yeah. Wales in a Day. That's at the YTV building, that. Photoshop, I Photoshop that. <laughs> <laughs> Dean looks massive. He's not actually that big. <laughs> uh, yeah, training's been going well. It's very hilly where I live. I'm in Derbyshire, and this yeah. course is actually quite flat. It's 100 miles in Essex. Mm. Good luck there. You're going to need some serious yeah. padding, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, the problem here, if you look at any of the statements surrounding pancreatic cancer, under-researched because it's underfunded, massive underfunded, mm. and it's the deadliest common cancer more than half, as you mentioned, more than half the people die within three months of diagnosis. Only 7% of people with the disease will live for five years. It would appear mm. that once you know you've got it, time's up. The thing is, it's picked up very late because people are unfamiliar. They're unaware of the symptoms. Apparently, only 8% of the public know what symptoms may be. So when it's picked up so late, inevitably, you know, we are sort of, we've gone into spread of the cancer as opposed to sort of localization of the pancreatic cancer. So I guess the most important thing here is symptoms. Symptoms which you've are some. key. So yeah. Early de de detection saves lives. So it's really, you know, symptoms can be vague. Symptoms can be non-specific and they might come and go. However, the way, if we can pick up, the public can pick up symptoms earlier on mm. and... I've broken this down into five P's mm. for pancreatic cancer. So I've suggested it's pale colour, pale yellow. So when you go jaundiced, you know, that is an indica indicative sign. Your poo, your poo may be quite pale in colour, so look out for those symptoms. Your pee, your urine may be quite dark in colour, as you mentioned, yellow, orange. You may get pain in your tummy. That may be in the front of the tummy or between the scapula, between the mm -hmm. back. And you may get bloating, you may get nausea, vomiting. Again, they are non-specific symptoms mm. and poor appetite. You might lose weight unexpectedly. You might get fatigue, lethargy. So thinking of those five Ps, which is sort of uh, simple to remember, mm. if you can do, might lead to awareness and early diagnosis and can save lives. So and that, uh, sorry, Hollis, that, that early diagnosis that you mentioned there, mm. does that prolong your life it doesn't cure you you can't you know that's not that's not it done it, what the charity are working on at the moment is an early diagnostic test so if you've got these vague symptoms be it a blood test and they're working on it in the lab at the moment but they need more money for research to move this forward but if you can catch it early yeah and it's it's at the head of the pancreas it won't wrap itself around then they can operate all those people who've got pretty much all of them have gone beyond five years have had the whipple operation so it's about seeing it early getting the op and then moving on. Well, you need to make as much money as possible to make yeah. that happen, because that's key. Um, thank you. Good luck with the ride. Thank uh, you. You'll be great. And thank you very much. Thank as you. Well. Uh, have we got the link to uh, to Tony's? Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're good. there. You go. Thank Done you. that for you.